What up, what up, Wimbush here, and today we're taking a look at the CR Scan Fair Pro, which is a hardware 3D scanner. Now, I've done a lot of 3D scanning here on my channel in the past using hardware scanners and also using phone scanners, but this is actually the first time I've actually been able to scan my Dreamcast. And the reason I wanted to scan this was because this is actually the first gift my wife ever bought for me whenever we were dating back in high school. And so every time I get a 3D scanner, I try to scan this piece of hardware right here because I just want to save it forever in 3d and if i pop it open still got the original disc that came with the dreamcast and everything so you know this means a lot to me so whenever the people at creality reached out to me to ask me if i wanted to try out their brand new ferret pro scanner i said let's give it a shot and i was presently surprised with the results that i got and just to give you an idea of the type of results that you're going to get, this is actually the Dreamcast inside of Redshift, inside of Cinema 40 right now, and it doesn't look that bad. Let me actually take a look at the actual geometry here. Now, this is sitting inside of Cinema 40. Let me actually take off the material there so we can see what it looks like raw, but this is what my raw data looks like on my scan here. And if I come over here to look at the lines, you can see that it's really dense. And so you can actually go through and make it less dense if you want to, if you're in cinema or blender or ZBrush, you know, whatever you want to use. But I think this is actually a pretty good scan for what I'm able to get. So let me walk through the steps of what I did to actually get this. So my basic setup is pretty easy. I have a light box and I actually have a turntable. I got both of them off of the internet there pretty cheaply. Then I actually have it stacked with just this black tape right here, just to prop it up a little bit. And then I also printed out these UV guides here as well. I know I have tracking dots on my turntable there, but I thought this might give me a little bit better results because my Dreamcast is big and this just gave me a lot more real estate to be able to track with. Now I've been researching online before I actually did my scan. And I saw people do it without that, but just me doing my 3D scanning in the past, I usually get better results whenever I have it sitting on something like a checker pattern there. Now the software that comes with the scanner is pretty basic and pretty simple to get started with, even if you've never done any type of hardware scanning before. Right here, you see all the options that you have for feature. I went with texture because I did want to get the texture out of my scan with this. And if I come down here to turntable, I am using a turntable. So make sure I click that on as well and just go to new scan. Now, as you can see right here on the left hand side, you'll actually see the object inside of this grid box and it's giving you a line right beside it that's telling you if you need to move in closer or move further away. And it's all working here in real time, which I thought was really neat because I'm watching the screen instead of watching my actual hand scanning and everything. And this is just giving me the type of insight that I need to get an optimal scan. Now, once you hit play, you start seeing that everything that's scanning with the camera will be in green and everything that was already scanned is in this like oranges color and it's just actually scanning everything in real time so you can see the way that the model is coming out as you're scanning it which i thought was really helpful there because i know as i'm going up and down on my object here i know exactly the spots that i need to hit and if i needed to pause it i can actually just pause it right here get readjusted if I needed to, and then go back into it, hit play again, and start off where I left off. I am on a rotating table, and so I found it optimal to make sure my scan lined up with my position, and then just hit play, and keep going from where I was at. And then once you're done, just hit complete scan. I see a point cloud version of my scan and it looks really good here inside of my viewport. Now, one of the things that I really liked about the software that came with it is like I scanned it going this way, right? I just have it sitting on my turntable going normal, but I wasn't able to fully get the underside, which I thought might be equally important. Just, you know, just to have a full model there. And so I was able to actually flip it over on the side and continue scanning. So same basic concept as before. I just have it sitting on the side there. I actually am import it a new scan and once it's done you can actually collide these both together to make a full model which really helped out now with my setup that i have on my table behind me i actually have my laptop doing all the work but i wanted to get into the nitty gritty here on my home pc so i just hooked it up to a thumb drive brought the files over to my main pc here and just went to tile merging everything so whenever i open up both files as you can see right here like this is the main body and as you can see it turned out really well here on my scan and if i look at it with no color this is just the mesh that we see in here and i thought it got pretty good results in there even with the color on there i thought that the texture looks pretty decent like there are some hiccups there with the power button some stuff that you could probably go back and fix if you really needed to and then if i look at it on the side angle 
you can see that this is the scan that I got when I put it upright inside of my light box there. So you can actually take these two models and collide them together. If I just come over here on the right hand side, it says point cloud merging. You can merge everything that you have in here. So you can actually take more than just two scans. You can take a bunch of scans if you want to grab the best pieces of them and merge them together. And once it's merged together, this is the result that we got. So you can see that I have my main body here. Now I was able to merge the bottom together with it. And we just have a complete object now that we can export out as an object file and bring it to any application we want, like Cinema 4D or Unreal Engine or whatever you want to use at the end of the day. Now for anybody that follows my channel, you know the main 3D programs that I like to use are Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine. But the thing that I noticed whenever I imported it is the axis is going to be off on your object. So I brought it, me personally, I brought in the Cinema 4D to fix it and then I brought over the Unreal Engine. But you can use anything you want like Blender or Maya or just anything that you're going to be able to change the axis. And for me, Cinema was the easiest way to do it. But let me show you what I was talking about. So this is what it looks like bright and raw. You can see that I have my axis point here at the zeros and I have my 3D object over here. So the first thing I did was just come over here to tools, come down here to axes, come down here to axis center. Just make sure I click all these on and hit execute. And then I brought my axes into the center of my object. Then from here, just zero everything out. So it's in direct zero of my viewport right here. And then I just went through and aligned it, which I just come through here, just bring it up like this, maybe come over on the quads, just line it up properly with the grid until you get some good results. And then I just move my axes along as well. Now I'm not gonna bore you with how I manually did it there, but that was just the basis of how I got it. And then at the end of the day, this is what it looks like. And this is using Redshift. And once I have everything lined up as I like it, then I export it out the Unreal Engine in which I did the FBX method. So just click on my objects here, come over here to file, come down here to export, click on the gear for FBX. And then I just made sure I had everything selected that I wanted to bring over. So this is Unreal Engine 5, and more particularly, this is UEFN. This is Unreal Engine for Fortnite, which is basically Unreal Engine 5, but you can make games for Fortnite in it. But you can see down here, I have my static mesh, which is my Dreamcast. I can bring it into my level, and this is what it looks like once it's inside of Unreal. So it looks pretty dope here inside of my environment, you know, connecting with the lighting and all that different stuff. But we can also make this a part of our playable level. But first, before I do that, down here inside my material, I see that we have like a lot of gloss on there. So I'm gonna come over here into my map, maybe add some roughness to it, a little bit more roughness. So maybe like 0.8, somewhere around there, hit save. And now I think that looks a lot better inside of my scene, but let's actually see how this plays out inside of Fortnite. So once I got the gameplay going, this is what it actually looks inside of a working game environment. So you can see even with the highly dense mesh, it's still able to run inside of this Fortnite setup, which I thought was really cool. So I can see now that I can use this in the future to maybe scan some items to put inside of my game level. You know, it might just need a little bit of cleanup on here, or even if I made it smaller, you wouldn't notice it as much like there on events on the side. You can easily go through and retexture that, fix that up a little bit, and even with that play button up there. But all in all, I think if I made this a lot smaller, this could be really cool that add inside of a game level. So honestly, I've done a lot of scanning with other hardware devices. I've done nerf scanning, Gaussian splatting, and all those different types of scanning techniques, photogrammetry. But honestly, I think this might've given me the best results. I do need to do a lot more tests, maybe with some more shiny objects, but I'd have to say for being able to scan my Dreamcast, that's what I really wanted to be able to scan and this handled it like a champ. So hopefully this helped you guys out. And if you want more details, look at the description down below where I have a link to everything. If you have any more questions on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.